Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to the Toronto Raptors 110-102 loss against the Dallas Mavericks. This puts the Raptors 8-4 on the season, just finished probably the toughest stretch of games they're going to have, tough road trip, and on the last game of the road trip, Riker, the Raptors once again, like they've done every game this season, put up a remarkable f fight despite being shorthanded, but... We, we saw it especially at the end. They lost a lot of their steam. The star player, Pascal Siakam, really struggled to get his game going tonight. But not not a horrible game for, for a Toronto Raptors fan watching at the on the last game of a five-game road trip. Not horrible. The mm -hmm. third quarter, maybe, you could consider yeah. horrible. And then, but the like you said, the, the Raptors managed to scrape back, grit and grind, mm -hmm. until... It was a two-point game with two minutes yep. left, and then Luka Doncic being the, well, he's not an all-star yet, but being the, the superstar player he's developing into, took control he's of the game. He's a superstar game. now. He's I would, remarkable. He had one play behind the back. He was getting doubled, mm -hmm. and he slipped He slipped through a double team with a behind-the-back move, got tripped, and then still made the pass to Finney Smith, or what, Finney? Fin yeah. Finney Smith, I believe. Finney Smith. Still Dorian made the fast. Finney Smith. Dorian Finney Smith. So still got that pass off after getting tripped. Just, he is a magical looking player. The Raptors, they had success in their defensive sets against the previous teams to slow down the number one guy. Tonight, they didn't seem to have an answer for Luka Doncic and the, the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the defensive scheme a bit and what, what our thoughts are on that, but just want to give a shout-out to Luka Doncic because this is the, the first full game I've watched of him this season, but 29 points, 10 rebounds, 9 assists he's averaging on the year. That, that's remarkable for a second-year player. So he's he's a tough guy to st stop regardless, but our superstar, our guy that we're, we're hoping gr blossoms into a superstar, Pascal Siakam, been remarkable this season, but tonight only 15 points on 6 of 24 shooting, 2 of 10 from the three-point line, 7 assists, which is solid, but 5 turnovers. I, Riker, th I've been harping on this every kind of loss that we've had this season. Pascal Siakam, in our all of our wins, he's closing games he puts up big points big numbers and he shows glimpses of that he has the intangibles to be a superstar player he's like a little in his infancy of becoming a superstar but the thing that's kind of the reason i wouldn't declare him that as uh, as that label right now is because in games like this when the raptors offense is stagnated when we're you know because we have great players on this team fred van vliet norman powell we'll talk about how well they played tonight and you know og uh, different players have stepped up all year but when the offense stagnates and we saw this from Kawhi last season the superstar of the team is there to get timely buckets and kyle Lowry's never a superstar because of just he didn't have the intangibles the talent but he always gave timely buckets for the toronto raptors and if pascal siakam can do that on a consistent basis i think he'll be you know we'd win games like this even when we're struggling you know putting the ball in the hoop so what did you see from pascal siakam tonight because he was getting the good shots he was getting making the right plays in my opinion but unfortunately they just weren't going down well, my, I had a bit of a viewing party this evening. My roommate said mm -hmm. felt like after the second half, so when they did the switch, uh, switch sides, it seemed like there was a curse or a hex on the on the <laughs> on the rim. All the three point shots were clunking out hard. There was a really hard mm -hmm. echo on the rim as well, at least on the the TSN stream that I was listening to. But Pascal Siakam specifically tonight was a difficult night because Dallas is big, and I didn't really give them credit for how big they are. Not necessarily amazing fantastic defenders but when you have Maxi Kleber and uh Kristaps Porzingis and Powell what I forget Dwight Powell is that his Dwight Powell yeah Dwight Powell so yeah there's a big lineup right and so when mm. you're relying on guys you know Marc Gasol has been invisible for practically this entire season and like you said when the offense is stagnant and you're relying on Pascal Siakam well he's not having a an easy time once he gets to the rim because there is such length of the Dallas Mavericks team and I agree there's things that he needs to do before he can take the step to be a superstar and tonight was a bit of a test and unfortunately unfortunately he wasn't able to deliver but it wasn't due to lack of bad or yeah. lack of good shots maybe too many threes but most of them were good uh, shot yeah. attempts I thought yeah, I've seen a few people trash on Siakam for taking 10 threes. Yeah, I guess if he's not going and the shots aren't going down, that's a fair critique. But I want Siakam shooting those shots. He's shown he's tremendously improved on that. And most games this season, he's been shooting those types of numbers from three, but better percentages, obviously. So no one's been complaining. I I'd love for Siakam to keep playing this way, but you brought it up. The Toronto Raptors, especially with Ibaka not on, on the court, are extremely undersized going up against a matchup like the Mavericks. You brought up Kleber, Porzingis, Dwight Powell coming off the bench, but not not even just those guys. We're starting, you know, a smaller Fred Van Vliet, Norman Powell, and 
they, they have big guards as well. Seth Curry, Luka Doncic, Finney Smith, they're they're big wings. You know, they don't have a small guard out there on the court. And even when they're when they're bench guys come in, uh, Jackson, DeLon Wright, we know DeLon Wright's length, even Hardaway Jr., they have a lot of size on this roster. So I think that really got to the to the Raptors tonight. But we'll, we'll talk about some positives. We'll swing it into some positives because one guy that played really well for the, the Toronto Raptors, Norman Powell, 26 points, 6 rebounds, 9 of 15 from the field. And you brought up the curse in the second half. And it, it even with Norman Powell's amazing night, it affected him as well because he missed about three open layups, completely wide open ones that honestly would have swung this game because, you know, those are momentum changers and we only lost by eight. But regardless, he certainly was a guy that kept us in this game. What did you see from Norman Powell tonight? You're absolutely right. Jack made the comment when he goes, when Norman Powell goes to review tonight's tape, he's going to say he should have had 32 points because mm-hmm. it was yeah. exactly right. Three completely missed layups. So Norman Powell played fantastic. I We'll talk about the whole bench. There was a lot of really solid performances tonight, but especially Norman Powell. And I I think it was, one, you're not going to have that consistency with three-point shooting night in and night out, but he played really athletic tonight, and he had some good drives Mm -hmm. and some good confidence, which is, to me, that's the... That's the reason for his inconsistencies a lot of the night a lot of the times yeah. is because his IQ is not always there. Sometimes he plays wild and out of control, but tonight I thought he played really poised, which is good for Norman Powell. Yeah, certainly. And this is what I've been saying, because I'm I've been living and dying on Nor- Norm Island because he's <laughs> had such an up and down career with the Toronto Raptors, and sometimes I'm proven right, and so a lot of times I'm not proven right in my support support for Norman Powell, but tonight Right, you mentioned it. When he's aggressive and making smart decisions going at the rim, I know he missed a couple layups tonight, and sometimes he drives a little bit too fast for his own for his own sake, but he, he was making all the right decisions, and even though the three-point shoot, he's not going to shoot six for eight from the three-point line night in, night out. If he can just be explosive, get to the rim, I said this, he got the Damari Carroll Gold Star, I think, one or two games ago. I said, if Norm can get us a consistent 12, 12 points per game, right, around that area, we're going to be chilling. We're going to be great. We're going to be very well off, and... I think that it, it, without all the remarkable shooting we get from him, that's just icing on the cake. If he can play this athletic, this confident going to the rim, he's going to be just fine with this Toronto Raptors team. But you brought up a lot of other players played well. The bench guys, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson especially, Matt Thomas, they they came in the game and played played really strong. And Fred Van Vliet as well, 24 points, 7 assists. You know, not, not the greatest shooting efficiency, 8 of 18 from the field. But what did you see from those three guys? I, I saw some amazing performances tonight, Ben. Matt mm-hmm. Thomas... Wow. Yeah. Great, fantastic mm-hmm. shooting. Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, I can't get enough of him out on the court because his hustle, his defense, if he can mm-hmm. figure out how to maybe make some of his gimmies, some of those bunny layups, he's going to be a really he was pretty solid good piece. Yeah, he was. He was pretty he good, was pretty good tonight. Yeah. But he has he has some shots that I'm thinking, I'm mm-hmm. thinking he, he really could finish, he could capitalize on, and he'll be a next-level yeah. player for the Toronto Raptors. Like, he'll be a crucial part coming off the bench. Same thing for Terrence Davis. They just, uh, all of them, I, I like what I see. It could be a new style of bench mob, especially when Patrick McCaw comes back. Then we have four guys that we can really lean off of coming off well, the bench. And, oh, and Serge Ibaka. Of course, I, yeah. I I sort of consider him to be a starter, and maybe that that's yeah. where the team is going to shift now that Marcus All has been really tragic as of late. But I, I really love the performance of all these guys because, man, if the starters aren't performing, and it's not the it's not a misperformance, but you know when you have guys like Siakam and and uh, and Fred Van Vliet on any given night, if they're not playing at the top of their game, and you can throw in your bench guys to get the, the hype back up, the motivation, to get the momentum, and then put back out your, your starters, then that's a good feeling. Yeah, certainly. And, I, you know, we could talk about the players. A lot of the guys played well. Fred Van Vliet, 24 points, 7 assists, minus 22 for the game, which is kind of interesting to see. But he hit a lot of big shots to keep the Raptors in this, keep the momentum going. But, you know, one one thing I want to bring up before we swing into the segments, the Raptors' defense tonight, They Nick Nurse switched to a kind of really high 3-2 zone uh, to, I guess it was the, the strategy was to combat the size of Porzingis. We, we talked about the size a lot at the beginning of this podcast. I guess that was a way to kind of switch them out, get them out of their comfort zone. What, what did you see out of that type of defense? It was a mix of a high 3-2, a box 1. Do you think that was the most? Because Nick Nurse, he has free reign to try all these obs, you know obscure defenses, and a lot of time they work out. Do you think that was necessarily the strategy tonight? or I was really you know, not thrilled yeah. with tonight's defensive scheme mm-hmm. because they were playing the box and 1 against... Clippers, which worked successfully against Kawhi, regardless mm-hmm. that they didn't get the, the win. They played box and one against Damian Lillard for the majority of the game against Trailblazers. It worked perfect. You know, you're challenging mm-hmm. guys like um, 
uh, who stepped up against the Trailblazers? Oh shoot, he's Rodney Hood, right? You're, if you're, you're gonna challenge guys like Rodney Hood to step up, but in tonight's matchup, this high three-two uh, switched into a, a box and one on Luka Doncic to double him. They just Dallas. They figured it out in the second half. They swung yep. the ball really well. They got it to their corner shooters who were making their shots. All credit to the Seth Curry's and and whatnot of the Dallas Mavericks tonight. And then when. They were running them off the line. Pascal Siakam was jumping every time. Uh, Terrence Davis jumping every time. They, they couldn't stay on their feet and, and close out these uh, these corner shooters. So then they'd run off and then easy dump, dump pass into whoever the big man was on the on the Dallas Mavericks. So in a simplified way, I think they Dallas figured it out. It yeah. didn't make enough sense to double Doncic. Fantastic player. It didn't make enough, enough sense for me to, to blitz him five feet back from the three-point line rather than just play man-to-man defense, right? That, so mm-hmm. that was my big pet peeve of tonight's game. And then also the the the, the difference in calls. 33 free throws yeah. attempted uh, for the Dallas Mavericks and only 15 for the Toronto Raptors. And there was almost even shots in the paint for both teams. So those are, those are my two frustrations with tonight. Yeah, no, that's certainly fair. And Luka Doncic is such a good passer that... They figured out, because the first half, the defensive scheme was really working well. Luka Doncic had five turnovers going into the half, and then he ended up with ten, a seven for the night. But you know, he was a lot more calm, a lot more picking the defensive part with it with this passing. And you brought up that kind of crazy behind-the-back play. So you know, Nick Nurse, I love that he does different schemes. And with a undermanned lineup, it makes sense that he's going to tr- pull out all the stops to try and get a W. But maybe switching it up would have been key, going man-to-man, figuring something out. But obviously Nick Nurse knows all about basketball, and we're, we're not going to question him too much on the podcast. But regardless, we're going to swing it straight into the spicy p of the day. And tonight, the spicy, do you have one in mind, Riker? Uh, no, not off the top of my head. You know, rarely it goes to the other team, but the the big one that comes to my mind is that uh, crazy behind the back play that uh, that Luka Doncic had. He had some remarkable passes and all that in this game. We could uh, also give it to Ben. Yeah, I did remember this. Pascal Siakam had a nasty block. I don't remember who it was, mm-hmm. but threw it, hit it against the backboard, and then transition offense. Fred Van Vliet, he he did a, a hesitation spin back oh, move. Oh, that was that was nice. right, and then fed it right back to Siakam, who finished the the, the transition layup. So that that was probably the, the P lay for the Raptors. Yeah, certainly those. You know, the Raptors they looked a bit tired tonight. Not too many highlight plays, but that was certainly a big one. But that that Luka Doncic behind the back. I, I really like this guy. I, I think he's going to be <laughs> a legit player in this league. But uh, not all plays can be the. Spicy P lay of the day. It's, I'm getting used to the new name trying to say it, but uh, some just make you say, oh, geez. And tonight, the OGs play for me, Riker. It's going to, to Norman Powell. It's, uh, you know, he had such an amazing game tonight, but early in this one, Fred Van Vliet was in the corner, and Norm tried to do one of these kind of over the head passes to him, and went straight into not even the first, second, third row. That, that, that looked like a couple sections up. That almost may have hit the ceiling how high that one went. So, <laughs> uh. certainly made me say, oh, geez. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. And then the one, the only, the Damari Carroll Gold Star Award for worst performance of the night. One, also, before I say it, shout out to DeLon Wright, who played really well against his yeah. his ex-Raptors team. Uh, he mm-hmm. played, I forget what it was, a layup. I don't know what his particular basket was, but he stared down the Raptors bench, so he was playing with a bit of passion tonight. But I'm I'm giving the, the Damari Carroll Gold Star Award to... Marcus Saul, and not for the usual reasons, just because he he sucks this season, to be frank, which he does, but that's not the reason he's getting it tonight, is because he had a fantastic opportunity to bully Perzingis, which he did. He pushed him back, right? He got good position. Yet instead of just doing a step through or a left hand layup, right? Or drawing a foul, he opted for a baby hook every time, or he'd do a fadeaway, one handed push shot. His shot selection was absurd, and he was getting. It seemed like him missing shots was getting under his own skin. He should have been able to take over this. Event. I was so disappointed, Ben. I, mm-hmm. I was so disappointed in Marcus Gasol tonight. Yeah, I, I still love Marcus Gasol's game and the fact that he still plays a lot of defense. And he's usually, even when the scoring's not there, he's usually a solid passer. But it's tough to it's tough to argue with you tonight on on his performance. One of seven from the field, only six points, nine rebounds. I guess which is okay. But for a guy that his whole career got buckets left right and center and for the memphis grizzlies you know could finish down the lane had had a myriad of post moves to to eat beat up defenses with with this toronto raptor especially this season you know because even last year when he had his few post ups he'd be pretty crafty down low he, he still has the footwork and the kind of quick little jitteriness in the block but then his finishing 
he's yeah as you mentioned it's bring he's bringing up these weird baby hook shots that are, aren't coming close it's it's really obscure so i'm hoping gasol gets that finishing touch that he once had back in a back in memphis but uh the, the final thing i want to bring up for the people that streamed this game and got to witness the halftime show of the the dallas mavericks did you see that record no i was watching tsn okay yeah no there was a there was a wild halftime show of some guys on unicycles and all that and you know one of them had a giant unicycle he threw up had the open dunk lined out i guess he was on a unicycle so i can't really roast him but missed this open dunk you know he's doing his halftime show he made a few after but it kind it was it was a very obscure witnessing they had a they had a few weird inter segment things in the dallas mavericks arena tonight but that that halftime show it, it might be on youtube or something definitely definitely check it out wow yeah i can't even i'm not picturing anything as you're explaining that because it's, it's <laughs> there's two there. guys two guys with long wavy hair riding unicycles and throwing basketballs at each other it was it was kind of wild there's a bit i was planning on doing some study and doing my in, in between intermissions that's what i was doing most of the game but the halftime i was locked in i was wow. i was watching this stuff <laughs> well you know they said everything's bigger in texas Right, bigger and better. So, <laughs> even the unicycle. <laughs> even even the unicycling. <laughs> Anyways, that, that's that's enough rambling on this podcast. You guys are the best for making this fire. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Riker, tough loss, but you have any last words on this one? Going back home, we'll steer the ship into the the calmer tides. <laughs> Cheers, big facts.